We're back out on the bass buggy, and today we're diving headfirst into what might be my most controversial video yet. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and on this channel we've been known to tweak a few noses and ruffle a few feathers from time to time, especially with videos like what colors do bass actually see based on the science, and using that information, what color baits should you actually be throwing? Is this something that bait and lure companies are just trying to goad you into buying? Well, the answers to that were pretty surprising. I'll link those videos down below in the description and you can check them out after you're done watching this one. But today's topic is probably something that's even more taboo you're probably on one side of the fence or on the other side of the fence with this. And I'm probably going to get quite a bit of hate for talking about this. And the question is, should you be changing out treble hooks on brand new baits right out of the package? A lot of guys swear by this. They'll tell you without a doubt, yes, you certainly should be switching out those hooks. If you want to be catching fish and not losing them all the time, then you need to be switching those hooks out. You need to buy your Gamakatsus and your Hayabusas and your Fusions and put those things on there so that they're so sharp they can split an atom in half. But what if I were to tell you that if you're losing fish, sharper hooks aren't going to help you. It's your technique that needs work, not your equipment. Let me tell you a little story. See, not too long ago, a few weeks ago, a buddy of mine and I, we were out on the bass buggy out on the big lake. And we're out having a good time. It was a nice day for fishing. We had some overcast skies and a little bit of wind. And we were doing okay. The thing is, though, is that he would hook into a fish and he would lose it. And he would grumble. And he was fishing a Strike King 6XD in this shad pattern. I believe it was a sexy shad pattern, if, if my memory serves right. And he would hook into these fish, and he would lose them. Over the span of about an hour, he was able to bring one or two to the boat, but he lost two or three of them. And he was getting pretty annoyed with himself. Actually, he was getting pretty annoyed with his gear more than anything. On the other side of the boat, I was fishing a swim jig, and I caught three or four pretty nice keepers, two and three pounds, but I didn't lose any of them. Every single time I hooked into a fish, I brought it to the boat. After a while, we moved to a different part of the lake and started covering different water, and I switched up to a lipless crank, a red-eye shad specifically. Well, we had moved over to this steep 45 degree bank that was over the top of an old roadbed. It was a really sweet spot, especially if you could find the bass holding up there. I was throwing that lipless up against the bank and then bringing it back to me, and I caught a few more fish doing that. And he was throwing a square bill. I don't remember exactly the brand. It may have been a Berkeley. But he was losing fish once again. He would hook into one, start reeling it in, and it would be gone. He would hook set on another one, start reeling it in, get it almost to the boat, and again, it would be gone. Now this buddy of mine, he is an avid believer of changing out those treble hooks. It's the first thing he does. He breaks out those gamakatsu trebles and he puts them on those crankbaits. He does that first thing. He believes in it almost religiously, and he will swear up and down it helps him to bring fish to the boat. But here's the kicker of this story. I looked at his gear, and he's fishing a 7 foot 2, 7 foot 3 heavy action rod with a, I believe it's probably a little bit faster tip, which is fine, especially if you're fishing like a 6XD, something that's going to give you a lot of resistance when you're dragging it through the water. I myself like to have a little bit stiffer rod when I'm fishing something of that nature. Otherwise, my wrists start to get shorter after a very short time. Anybody who's tried to fish a 6XD or a 10XD on a softer rod will realize you're actually in for quite a struggle. Some fish I've caught don't fight that hard. So I use a heavier rod, which he was doing. And he had a 7.5 to 1, I believe, gear ratio. I don't remember exactly the brand name. It's not relevant. But he had 30-pound braid. He had 30-pound braid with no leader. And that's fine if that's what he wanted to use. But think about that for a second. He's using 30-pound braid with no leader on a heavy rod with hardly any give to it. So he could fish a deep diving crankbait. The problem wasn't with his hooks. The problem was with his setup. He wasn't allowing that fish to take the bait long enough. And because he had such little stretch in the braid and such little bend in the rod, well, that fish wasn't getting that bait good before he was essentially just snatching it out of their mouth. 
He might be able to skin hook one here and there, but they weren't caught anywhere good enough for him to bring them to the boat. But he was continually fussing all day, saying things like, well, the fish are just slapping at it. And as I'm able to bring these fish to the boat without losing any of them, he's fussing at me, he's telling me, I don't want to hear about it. You always say don't change the hooks, I don't want to hear about it. It's not me, it's the stupid fish. And that's fine, whatever. But the fact of the matter is, he had the wrong setup, he was using it the wrong way, and he was not letting those fish take the bait before he was doing a hook set. So he could have the sharpest hooks in the universe, and they were not going to help him in that situation. He needed a little bit more patience for those fish to inhale that bait, or perhaps he needed to put a fluorocarbon leader on the end of it, maybe give himself just a little bit more stretch to allow those fish to inhale that bait more to get that hook caught in their mouth. Now, a lot of times, that's what I'm seeing. When anglers are trading out the hooks on their brand new baits, it's not what they really need to be doing. It's certainly not the first thing they need to be doing. The first thing you need to do is analyze how those fish are taking the baits. And that's something that I've been working with and testing for quite a while. A lot of you will recognize this. It's one of my favorite jerk baits. It's just a regular H2O Express. This I got at Academy. I think I paid $4 for it. But you see how chewed up this thing is? You see how beat up it is? I have caught fish after fish after fish. I don't think I've ever lost a fish on this thing. And it's got the original hooks in it. These are not changed out. These are the original hooks. Another bait that I use quite often that has caught me a lot of fish is this guy right here. This is an Ozark Trails lipless crank. I bought this at Walmart for $2. It's got the original hooks on it. And, and this thing is all eat up with marks where the bass have bitten into it. I don't lose fish on this either. And a bait that many of you are going to be familiar with out there is this, a Cotton Cordell Super Spot. You see all the bite marks? You can see how beat up this thing is. Those are the original hooks. I tear open the package, I tie it on, and I fish with it. I don't change the hooks, and I don't lose fish. Now, before I started recording this video, I went back through my 2022 fish catches through the hundreds of fish that I caught this year and recorded, and I wanted to see how many did I actually lose. Well, it was a grand total of five fish. I landed over a hundred fish closer to 150 fish I caught on video just in 2022 for recording content for this channel and I lost five. Three of those fish that I lost were on Texas rigs. Two of them that I lost were on crankbaits and both of those times that those fish were lost they were my fault completely. I did not get a good hook set and I knew I didn't have a good hook set when I had those fish. I was pretty sure that I was going to lose those fish. And a lot of times you can do a really sloppy hook set, luck out, and get that fish to the boat. But that's where most of your problem is going to be, as we've discussed before. Now, not too long ago, I did a video on how it was your hook sets that were actually hurting you, not your hooks. I'll link that in the video description below and you can check that out after you look at this one. But that's what it boils down to. Now, I know there's some keyboard jockeys that are already down there telling me I don't know what I'm talking about, that they have so much more success when they swap out hooks, that they miraculously, whenever they swap out the hooks, they go from not being able to land any fish to landing every fish. They just jump on the hook and they can't get off. It's like Velcro. They're just stuck there forever. And you have to, you know, cut the barb off or whatever. You have to get a welding torch to, to get the fish off of the hook, whatever. I mean, I hear some extreme things. The fact is, that's just not the case. I have been fishing since Richard Nixon was president. I've never been one to change out my hooks when I buy them new. When do I change out my hooks? Why? When they need to be changed. If they're old, if they're rusty, if they get bent out, if a barb gets knocked off or whatever, if they're damaged in some sort of way, then I change out my hook. And yes, I do put a good one on there. I'm not saying Fusion and Gamakatsu and Hayabusa. I'm not saying that those are not good hooks. They are obviously high quality, but I don't need them. So there you have it. When you cut through the clutter and you cut through the noise, most of the time you realize it's not gear that's going to help you catch more fish. It's your technique. A lot of times we just need to take a breath, have a little patience, and let that fish inhale the bait a little bit better before we try to set the hook. Those stock hooks, most of the time, are going to be plenty sharp, and they're going to catch you a lot of fish. 
So if you want to change out the hooks, then that's fine. If that's something you feel comfortable doing, then that's fine. But overall, it's not going to bring you any more fish to the boat. It's going to be your technique. If you feel like changing out the hooks to something sharper is going to bring you more fish to the boat, well then that's fine. Do what you have confidence in. But most of the time, that's not going to land you any more fish. It's going to be your technique and allowing that fish to inhale the bait more. But again, as I've said, I expect a lot of people to disagree with me on this, and that's fine. We are here to share ideas, bounce them off one another, and hopefully I've given you a few to think about. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.